What's going on guys? Vic BB back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I have the OG Time Crisis cabinet that I built a couple of years ago. Customer had a little bit of an issue with his Dell Optiplex. I told him, send it to me, I'll get it working. And I took the time and updated his game list. He is at over 260 light gun games now. It is the OG. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, guys, John Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You got to make sure you put that underscore. You might be able to Google Vic VP, but it'll mostly come up as Vic underscore VP because that's the official name, Vic underscore VP. Also, be sure to, wherever I put it, <laughs> like and subscribe. Again, be sure to follow all the socials, Instagram stories. Again, I always say it, I'm heavy on the Instagram stories. You'll see everything current, up to date. Any little thing I do, I'm getting a lot of traction on the shorts. People want more information as far as how I get certain games working with their arcade sticks. The whole nine yards. It's just everything gaming and pinball. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials. The link tree. Click it. And then there's like a bunch of links. Go. Go now. Not now. Go after. <laughs> Enough of the social media plug-in. This one is awesome. I'm super excited for this. The iconic. I'm going to probably say it's probably iconic slash legendary build that I've done, which is known as the Time Crisis using the 32 inch game room solutions cabinet. The customer had a little bit of a situation, hit me up. I'm always there to help no matter what, whether you're a customer of mine or not, I'm always down to help. He had a little bit of a situation with his Optiplex and I'm actually going to reenact the situation because I do feel like I went over it in the overview video of his build. Um, but just in case I will do it again, he basically had a boot issue. Um, it really happens to any PC. It's not just a, dot, a Dell Optiplex that will do this. Really, it was pertaining to the CMOS battery. It almost looks like a watch battery. Uh, sometimes CMOS batteries die, or you know they're so depleted. Uh, basically, the CMOS battery keeps the memory of the motherboard of the PC. That's not the exact reason what it's for, but the easiest way to simply say it is that it kind of remembers like your date and time, and it also remembers how to boot whether you set it up to do a boot sequence and all that, it kind of just keeps the memory on the motherboard. That's how I understand it. That might not be the scientific, real professional way a CMOS battery is explained, but uh, you know what I'm saying. His CMOS battery basically was dead. Uh, and I, once I got in my hands, I kind of had a feeling that's most likely the issue. And uh, with a quick one, two, three swap, PC is now back up and running. I'm the type in this situation, I didn't really charge him because I knew it was gonna be a CMOS battery. Trying to explain to some people to open up the PC, change the CMOS, then you have to also go into the BIOS and change settings. You could figure it out. I mean, it's, you don't need brain surgery. It's a kind of a quick Google YouTube search. You'll kind of figure out what you have to do as far as CMOS. But I also told them, you know what, man? Send it to me. Let's do a couple of updates, especially with game-wise. Again, it's, it's been a while. Not a ton of PC, or I really should say any light gun games. Not a ton of light gun games has come out. So I wasn't really missing much, but I probably did add a good, I would say 20 to 30 games on this build. Now you guys could go back on my videos and you could see the original Time Crisis video. I believe I broke it up into three like videos. Uh, basically like a quick overview and then I did a full in-depth detail. Uh, it's probably the most iconic cabinet build. Uh, I do remember when that video went out, people were going nuts. I mean, we're talking about the super jolts and then sliding recoil. There was a lot of stuff. And then also what's really cool with this is this was Gen 1. I messaged Joel, Retro Lizard. This is Gen 1 Retro Lizard build. Um, what a journey. Uh, it's, just, it's just so cool. A lot of people always think, they even message me, they're like, oh, you know, are you and like Joel like competitors? And I'm like, no, I don't really have competition. Uh, I don't want to sound cocky. I don't think I have competition. Uh, we're on we're on different like, wavelengths. Everybody to me is different wavelengths. I don't talk bad about companies and compet. I don't really. I'm the type of person where we could all eat. As long as you don't talk bad about me, you won't really hear anything bad. I won't say anything bad about you. It's kind of like you know. Respect me and I will respect you. So it's awesome. I always get that comment where like, are you like and Joel like cool with each other? Like, yes, we actually now have a podcast or a stream that we do bi-weekly known as the Three Amigos with 
Raymond, our peg electronics. It's just basically us three just hanging out. Um, it's been great. Again, this right here is Gen 1. And what's really great, and this is, you know, what's awesome, Joel, I'm not gonna be the responsible one, I'm not gonna say I'm responsible for Joel and his upgrades, but in the original Time Crisis video, I did mention that I wasn't really a fan of these kind of knockoff external drives. And ever since then, he went SSD. So I don't know if he did that because of me. If he did, you're welcome. If not, I'm just glad that you listened. So it's really cool. Um, again, Joel, Retro Lizard, awesome dude. We are, we have just basically become three best friends. Again, I'm throwing Ray in, because Ray is also a big part, especially when it comes to Retro Lizard, Joel's builds, and these like I'm built. Even for me, yes, my personal build, I do have aim tracks, and I do get made fun of them, but they work for my situation. My gun cab gets turned on maybe once a month. <laughs> if I ever have an event, the gun cab turns on. Other than that, until like a new PC game or a new like on game comes out, I'm really not playing my like on cabinet. So for me to invest in jolts for a cabinet that I'm not, I'm not using much, um, it doesn't make sense for me. Yes, I could get Ray's lower end like gun cons, um, but I have my aim tracks. I've had them and it's they work for me. I know that they're not the greatest. They definitely can't compare to gun for IR. That's a hundred percent factual. But what's kind of crazy right now with this whole gun. Uh, wave that we're doing with this retro shooter that came out um i am still sticking with my aim tracks uh i'm not looking at that retro shooter thing people go nuts i'm in a bunch of facebook groups and you know people like the newest stuff like oh check out this retro shooter and i'm not gonna talk bad about it because i never had it in hand but you can just watch joel's review on it and that's all i needed to see was joel's review on those retro shooters now going back to this build, again, this customer supplied this Dell Optiplex. I didn't supply this, he supplied the Dell Optiplex. I basically got the Game Room Solutions cabinet, built everything, configured it, and I shipped it out fully assembled. Um, I do, like I said, I remember faintly that I did have a BIOS issue before I sent it out, and I'm very sure I specifically made a video on like a tutorial on what to do. But basically what happened is that once I got this in my hand, anytime you kind of shut off the PC and you tried to reboot it in the customer situation, he sent me a video, he actually would like turn it on, you would see like the Dell logo, and then that was it. You even got a message saying something about like couldn't boot or missing a drive device or something like that. So once I saw that, I was like, oh, definitely, you know, you have to go back on the video and you have to go into the BIOS and adjust. Um, again, it, when I got it in my hand, I had the same thing, but I can't lie, I had like two different things happening. Um, I had that thing where it was just basically like, it said something about like can't boot windows, uh, and then it said something about like boot device not found. Um, again, I'm gonna try to reenact it, or I should really say I'm just gonna show you the steps that I did to fix that. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the new add-ons and stuff. Again, the customer supplied this Dell Optiplex. This is a dated Dell Optiplex. He has all the light gun games. Uh, again, I messaged Joel, I'll tell you about you know me messaging Joel and our little collab. Uh, I put my games that I have on this as well. He has all the light gun games, however, not all of them work. I don't use Launchbox, I don't use Big Box. This again is using Joel's Gen 1. That's what was funny, I sent Joel a picture of it and I was like, you guys, you remember this one, dude? And he's like, oh man, the Gen 1. Um, uh, he has Launchbox set up. I don't use Launchbox, I use Hyperspin. Uh, but basically, again, I added the games. The big thing with this Dell Optiplex, I believe it's running like a 750, like a GTX 750. It is a dated graphics card. So number one, again, he has all my games, but in Launchbox, I only have the games that will work. Really the big three that he doesn't, that it just didn't, like it would launch, but it was just in slow motion is the Namco 257 games. Uh, you know, Dark Escape, um, the Desert Storm Pirates, and the uh, Sailor Zombie game. Other than that, everything else launches. Once I got this, I was looking, I was like, oh, he didn't even have Rabbids. Hollywood, uh, that's how dated this build is. He didn't, he didn't have it. Um, again, as far as like game upgrades or updates, You'll have to message Joel on that. I'm not going to speak for Joel. I'm very sure Joel does game updates, but I you have to message him. Uh, but again, customer's been enjoying his 
built. He's been enjoying his cabinet. It's been a while since those videos went out. And he just said, hey, Vic, man, I just need some help with this boot issue. He said, send it over, dude. I'm not going to charge you for it. In my vision, in my mind, it was about a one-day thing. Uh, when it came to adding the games, though, you're looking at around maybe two or three days added. It's my kiddo probably. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Now the customer did the right thing. He sent me the PC along with the Gun for IR Jolt. Um, in all honesty, again, this is a dated build. There's not many new multiplayer light gun games. Uh, I did put like Night Hunter. I did put Castlevania. Those are probably like the two recent multi, you know, two player games. Uh, again, this build is dated. It did not have Rabbids and it didn't even have Tomb Raider. Um, so kind of, you know, I think if you go back, it's probably about two years old, this build, or even a little bit more than two years. Um, but the customer did good. He sent me the jolts and he sent me the PC. He sent me one power supply for the jolts. I didn't really need that. Uh, but I will say it's a party foul on my end. I don't have gun for IR LEDs. Um, that's me. I'll probably reach out to Ray and get a pair. But you might be saying, Vic, how did you test these games? Don't worry, I do still have my aim track bar. No, it doesn't work normally. Basically, if I held it right, I was basically able to like see the cursor and shoot. So it, I don't need the gun for IR. I, I wish I did have them, but my little BS aim tracks, I was able to at least get a point on the sensor to at least see the cursor and stuff. So I was definitely able to test to make sure that the player one and player two worked. Same thing with making sure it shot reloaded which is the r button or uh, right mouse click and then the middle mouse click as well but uh again even other stuff i added such as the house of the dead remake arcade mod that's the two player mod that's on this again it was just pretty cool to like i literally sat down i took a picture of my game list sat down and i compared it to his and i was like okay you're missing this and i basically just added a bunch of games as far as like the newer stuff, the current stuff, there's been a lot of like indie games that came out. So like for example, I have like Time Crisis VR training. Um, I have like Pixel Crisis. Uh, what else is it? The, the Lighthouse of the Dead. A lot of like indie games that also made it to here. But basically, again, he has his 260 games. Uh, again, the three Namco 257 games I do not have on his list. It is in the PC, but I don't have it on the list. It's just why, why put it on the list if it's not going to work. Now you might be saying to yourself, hey Vic man, how do you have Launchbox working and you don't have Joel's drive plugged in? I basically took another step to help the customer out. I wanted to clean this build up. The Dell Optiplex originally had this, a Sandix 256 boot drive SSD. And then he had Joel's drive as an external. And I remember, and I could see it in the front of it. You don't see it here. In the front of it, I actually made a hole through the front of the grill so that the USB could just basically be plugged in. The external drive was hidden inside. I basically removed the two. And now I put a one terabyte Samsung Evo boot slash D drive. It's the same thing. I partitioned it. So all of Joel's stuff that was assigned to the D drive is still assigned to the D drive, but it's all on a one terabyte SSD uh, Samsung Evo 970 boot. So that was pretty cool. Again, I knew like it was gonna be a quick battery thing, but I said, let me just take these extra steps just to make the customer happy. He didn't need it, he is happy. I don't, I shouldn't really say just to make him happy, but it's just something where like, you know, you said that to me, honestly, the customer right now is really just gonna be paying for the shipping back to him and the cost of the SSD, which is not that much. Um, but definitely it is a huge upgrade. Um, it has booted fast before because again, it was already using an SSD, but putting some of the games, or I should say all the games now on an SSD, and instead of Joel's Gen 1 uh, no name brand external drives that I complained about, um, they boot fairly quick. I'm not gonna say everything is lightning fast, but they do boot. It's also another little side note just to see that, you know, PC specs, it's important. Uh, for example, like I mentioned before, I have Tomb Raider on this. And if I do launch Tomb Raider, it's, it, it takes a few seconds. Uh, I'm going to probably blame that on like, I would probably say the graphics card. 
Not really much I could blame with as far as like the SSD. Um, yeah, right now, like for example, I did press enter on Tomb Raider. I did notice this kind of speed as far as Tomb Raider and Rabbids. Uh, why? I don't know, but it is an SSD and it should boot fairly quickly. But again, I don't even remember what uh, Intel board this is. I don't know if it's an i3 or an i5, um, but it's dated. The main thing though is yes, it does work. You might just have to wait a few, but it will work. Now, I'm just hoping that I pushed it correctly. Uh, it should, yep, it is, it is, because it has the loading thing here, but I'm not gonna cut this. I'd rather you see it when I push enter and I could see the loading bar here. Uh, again, just a, a small handful, again, Tomb Raider and Rabbids, where these are the standalone games. Basically, it's like a PC game, it's a standalone, doesn't use Techno Parrot in the background. Um, again, when I did run, Namco 257, that was a horrible time. It was just in slow motion. I even lowered all like the graphics and the quality and that was just, a, it, was, it was awful. Uh, but again, at least he is updated. Now, while this loads up, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this one thing um, that a lot of people have noticed and uh, I did get into, not, I didn't get into it, but um, uh, as you can see, the game is loading. I did get into this little kind of quick comment match with a Australian build company. If you guys know me and this company, you might have seen something that looked very familiar. And that is the Time Crisis artwork that I made for this cabinet. Now I exited out of Tomb Raider. I mean, I'm gonna load up another one that I just put in. Uh, this also didn't have many PlayStation 1 games. Uh, this did not have Time Crisis Project Titan. So I'm gonna press enter on that. And as you can see, we loaded up. This is utilizing Duck Station again. This is Joel's data and stuff. But I'm not gonna I mean, I'm not gonna say too much about this little kind of thing that I had with this Australian company. If I'm pretty sure you know this Australian company. Um, a lot of people, I, I'll never forget it. I got the message um, from somebody that said, hey Vic Man, you better check this video out that just came out of this company's cabinet because they are using artwork that looks very similar to yours. And I quickly looked at it and if you don't know, it is a company that starts with the letter X. Um, I'm not upset about the artwork. I just want to say this out loud. Um, artwork, I've gotten the request for my artwork. And let's just say I've helped and I've given the artwork out. So I'm happy I am sufficed. But Basically, I saw this cabinet. People were going nuts for this cabinet because really, to me, in my opinion, it is a Game Room Solutions cabinet just with a 50 or 55 inch screen. Um, you might have seen Retro Ralph got one of these cabinets. And uh, I saw the video and it was my graphics to the T. They basically bumped up the saturation and all that. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. But basically, I went in the comment section. I was like, hey man, beautiful cabinet. I'm happy to see that you like my artwork. And sure enough, that company replied back and all they said was, this is not your artwork. Get a grip mate. And that was it. I went, I hit that, that little double dot and I blocked. Don't ever disrespect me, mate. Again, I don't care. Uh, they make beautiful V-pins, but once I got that comment back and you got to end it with, it's not your artwork, mate. That was it. That was a wrap on that. But... I'm just happy people like the Time Crisis artwork. I, I do give big kudos if you do go on their comment section. There are people that have comments saying, hey, this looks like Vic VP, and actually they have blocked or hidden those comments. That's all I gotta say. Other than that, this is a great, great build. Let me just try to see if I could show you. See, as you can see, like with my aim track thing, again, I have to get like a good angle on it but I was able to basically aim and then hit it. Everything works, all tested, and he even sent me, which was great, this is all hardwired in. He does have the power button to the PC. That was to the back of the cabinet. Real quick, mentioning Joel. I mentioned him, I, I, I messaged him, not mentioned him. I messaged him, I said, hey bro, I have this customer. He's sending me his PC. Joel even offered to send me a new SSD. He's like, Vic, man, I'll just send you a new SSD. I'll put the boot stuff on it. Uh, I'll, I'll team viewer in. It'll probably take about an hour and he'll reconfigure everything. I said, Joel, I'll be honest, man. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I could take care of it from here, but 
it is great to know that he was willing to send me an SSD, no questions asked, and that's just awesome. Uh, again, this is essentially, and I made a big deal in the build video, this is really Joel Retro Lizard's build. I just made the cabinet and then configured around stuff, really meaning wiring stuff. He did everything else. Right now, I pressed the power button on the PC. We're gonna let it do its thing, and I'm gonna kinda show you later on, I'll do it at the end of the video for the customer, just in case you experience that boot issue, I'll just show you what it does. But basically, as you can see, everything was loaded. This Dell didn't load up. It had an error here saying something about like it couldn't find this drive or it couldn't find this device. But all in all, it boots the same way. My screen, for example, like it, for example, for some reason, um, I have it set to like stretch. So like I'm, it, it's not his PC. It's just my, you know, TV. This is like I use for like regular TV viewing when I'm on the battle station. But again, this is all set like he originally had it. What's very odd, and I even asked Joel and I asked others, I, for some reason, Big Box doesn't work on this PC. I downloaded like LaunchBox, a new set. I did everything, but for some reason, Big Box will not launch. It does have a license, but I don't know why. For some reason, Big Box won't launch. But again, originally that video, it went here. He had to click on a title, and then he has the button slash encoder on the cabinet to press enter. But the best thing now, everything works. All the new games that I put in, I did test, made sure that they did launch and that they did run. Again, a big handful of indie games were added and then a couple of two player games, like I said, with the House of Dead remake. But all in all, amazing stuff. Again, just it's just great. Uh, again, shout out Ray, RPEG Electronics. Uh, you know, he made the jolts. Uh, again, Joel with the drive. It's just great having a cool kind of team. Um, again, we're just a bunch of friends, just now become best friends, I would say. Uh, we message each other daily with some bullshit nonsense. And uh, you'll see more of that nonsense if you watch our Three Amigos uh, stream that we do bi-weekly. But other than that, there you have it. Time Crisis updated, refreshed. Again, at the end of this video or at the end of this segment, I will show the customer the boot setup just in case he ever incurs that again. But VicVP, Game Case Arcade, it was great having the OG Time Crisis back. So just to kind of reenact or if you ever have this boot issue again, I'll show you the steps. Again, basically what happened is that it is this. This is the CMOS battery that I mentioned earlier. It's like a watch battery. Um, the CMOS batteries, they die. Even on modern PCs, after some time, they do die. It is a quick, simple fix, but you would have to go back into the BIOS and you know fix the date and time, because that's also another error that I've seen on other builds, where there's like a date and time ever, especially with my Mega Touch builds. Uh, that's like a number one thing with Mega Touch is the CMOS batteries die. Uh, but you could also, ha and you have to also, assign the boot kind of setup and such. So if this boot thing ever happens again, I'll tell you the steps. Basically, you power on the PC. You're going to want to make sure you have a keyboard handy. Once you press the power button, you're going to spam the F2. Just spam it until you see the boot section come on up. Usually right now you could stop because we have the bar here. But the big thing is that we do want the BIOS. Every PC is different. This is the Dell Optiplex setup. So basically, if I go here, you can see the boot sequence is set up to Windows Boot Manager, UEFI. I do remember in the video, you had it, it, would, it would set to legacy and you had to go to F2 and set it to UEFI. But other than that, that was it. Once I got the PC in, I went, I did this adjusting here and then the PC booted. Uh, in legacy, it actually shows you um, like the drives and all that. There's like the CD drive and then the boot drive and all that. But again, for this specific Dell Optiplex, you're gonna wanna set it to Windows Boot Manager and then UEFI. Then you can't really use the mouse here, so you gotta use your tabs and then you're able to exit and it will boot. So again, if that ever happens again, F2, spam the F2. If it does happen, that means that the CMOS battery again died. But in all honesty, this now, swapping this out, this shouldn't happen for several years. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, that shouldn't happen for several years. But 
that was really it again for the customer I hope you enjoy it he sent me videos and he was like hey Vic man I'm trying to turn this on it's not working uh, I went through the steps but I just didn't remember what he had to press he'll go back on this part of the video and again it's on the original video um, and now you know how to turn on your PC <laughs> you shouldn't have that issue anymore again enjoy the newer games even though I didn't get uh, I didn't reach out to Joel I had some of Joel's files so for example duck station that is Joel's files and stuff but all in all game on buddy enjoy I mean it's been two years two years plus I don't know how long but uh, I'm just glad to see this is still chugging along and it's still bringing you enjoyment again always be sure to shut down your PC before you unplug everything sending it out today bud I'll send you the message <laughs>